Hello everybody and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. Today I am going to purchase my first truck. So as you can see I've been playing quite a bit off camera. I've really been enjoying this game. But just to let you guys know I have not traveled too far. So what I've done is the farthest north I've gone is pretty much like Sacramento Truckee area. And the farthest south I've gone is Los Angeles and Barstow. So I've kind of tried to stay in this area. I have not gone into Nevada. It says I've been to Reno, but I think it's just because I, visit, I visited a truck dealer there. So as you can see, I've not gone up to Redding or anything or Eureka. I've not gone down to San Diego. I have not gone to Vegas. I haven't gone to anything else. I've tried to stay within this area. So I've just been doing runs back and forth, trying to gain XP and money. So I'm a level eight now, and we have $81,000. And our skill points, so I have two in just time delivery, one in fragile cargo, one in high value cargo, one in long distance, and we have our explosives. We have our explosives, gas, and flammable. So we have class one, class two, and class three of our hazardous cargo. So we can haul quite a bit of stuff. So today we are going to be purchasing a truck and i want to go with a peter milt i ha i actually haven't discovered a kenworth dealership but it's fine i've i've known i wanted to go with a peter belt for a while so we're going to go visit the truck so this is the truck that we will be buying the standard peter built 579 duty cab which i'm totally cool with the duty cab a day cab it looks awesome i personally really like them but we're going to customize it a little bit so we haven't unlocked the next levels anyway what we have unlocked is a 200 gallon tank instead of 150 gallons, so that'll definitely help us out. Level 10, we'll get something else, probably bigger gas tanks. And then we have an engine upgrade, so we can go from 370 horsepower to 455 horsepower, which is what we're going to be doing. This is where things get a little complicated because we have a 10 speed, 13 speed, or a 10 speed with a retarder, or a 13 speed with a retarder. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a 10 speed with a retarder, uh, just until I'd rather not go with a 13. I feel like a 13 would just be more trouble than it actually is. Uh, we have no other interior options because we're not at level 10, so at level 10 we'll have to remember to jump back in. I personally like the way white looks, so we're going to stick with white. And then we can kind of customize and go from here. We've got some standard wheels so we can go with some different rims i'm not sure which ones we have basic steel chrome standard or seagull i'm not really sure let's look at them side by side look chrome standard in the back and seagull in the front mm. they look pretty similar uh let's look at the front ones i think the front ones are going to make the difference here chrome standard seagull uh, Let's go Chrome Standard. Actually, no. Let's go Seagull. I like Seagull. And then, I think we can change tires if we want to. Yeah, we could do Advanced Tires, which are the Roadmasters. Don't know why they are, but they are. You know what I haven't done? Taking a loan out. So I'm just customizing this truck for no reason. <laughs> Whoops. Did things a little bit backwards. So, let's go ahead and take a loan out before we just start customizing and trying to buy a truck. Um, so we could take a 50000 loan out, but like I said, we're not going to have much money left because the truck's going to be about 130000 That'll pretty much put us at like $131,000. we are only going to have a couple grand after that. So I'm going to take 100000 out just so I can have the money so I can not worry about like taking so many loads. The debt can start working its way off with a little bit of the money I have left over. Um, so let's go back and start purchasing this truck. And then we will uh, get out on the road in our new truck. So I'm going to go ahead and customize it to my liking. And then I will show you the, uh, the final product. So here it is. Our new Peterbilt 579 Duty Cab. It's not the greatest truck in the world, but it's a little bit modified. It's enough that it'll get the job done. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I really like day cabs. I'm not sure why I'm such a weird nerd about day cabs, but I love them. So now we have a truck to park in our garage, and now the real fun begins. All right, since we're in our truck, the first thing I want to do is get everything set up. I want to get the seating position correct because I didn't bother doing this so much in uh, the rented trucks just because, well, they're not really yours, so what's the point of moving your seating position around and everything when it doesn't matter? It's just not gonna stay. So 
I like to sit pretty high up, maybe not all the way up, maybe right about there, sit a little bit back, and then we can go ahead and check out our mirrors real quick. So I want to bring the front mirrors out a little bit, maybe what, this one? Nope, it's the wrong mirror, maybe, it, oh, here we go, hood left, there we go. So let's bring this one out a little bit, and then hood right. Bring that one out, blind spot mirrors. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do small left, which is trailer, stick that one a little bit further out. That's gonna keep an eye on the trailer. And we'll stick this one a little bit further out too. We don't need to see that much of the cab. Maybe right about there. And I don't know, right, let's do that. Maybe just a couple out. And then this one, just a couple out. Okay, so let's take a look. I think those are going to do quite well. I'm liking the way those are. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think we're good. So, now that we own our own truck, let's take a load somewhere. So we're going to be in San Francisco. That's where our garage is. And let's take a look at what we have. So I don't really want to go south because I've been to pretty much everywhere around there. So we looks like we only have places to Reno, which is gonna be fine, because I haven't actually driven to Reno. So let's try to find the best one. This one looks pretty good because it's a fragile cargo. It's also a little bit, it's an important delivery and it's 10 tons of tableware, a little short 28 foot trailer. Um, yeah, I like this one. Let's set this one. We will do this one. So let's go ahead and start the first trip in our new truck. I don't know if we, let's go ahead and not just back up. Let's let's go straight, do a U-turn. Let's flick on the lights here. We'll find it, oops. Hitting bumps and everything. Gonna flip this truck around. So I'm also on my G29 wheel. It finally, it showed up. And it is such a better wheel for trucking than the Fanatec. If you're wondering what kind of wheel to get, if you're into, trucking and you're not sure I made a mistake here um, I sh would recommend the G29 or G27 they both work well oh god I'm hitting bumps here the only reason why I recommend the G29 is just because it has more buttons so it's a lot easier when it comes to setting everything that you want up with it so it's just nice because you can you know, you have so many buttons across it, you can set one for literally everything. And then what I did, instead of using the G29 shifter, I'm just using my G27 shifter. So that way I still have a lot of buttons on my shifter. Um, that might not work for you. It works for me because I have that shifter box that makes my shifter a separate controller. Um, I'm not sure if it would work just plugging it into the G29 wheel, but it's worth a shot. But, um... Yeah, so that way I have t pretty much two separate controllers and a ton of buttons. So I really, uh, I like my setup right now. I have pretty much everything that I can think of set. The only thing is I have so many things set, sometimes it's hard to remember exactly what I have set for what. Whoops. Oop. All right, let's not destroy the gearbox. So let's go ahead and change our thing here. Here we go. Let's set our cruise to 35. Is that nip? That worked, right? Yeah, okay. 35 on the cruise. I use cruise control a lot. Really comes in handy, especially in the cities. You end up you end up speeding a lot, and speeding tickets are $1,000, and it's really just not fun getting a speeding ticket. Really does not... Does not make it fun. So it's 6.30. should probably turn our headlights on. Why not? So, yeah. Decided to go with a Peterbilt. I just like the dash layout a lot more. It has a little bit more gauges. I can have my cruise speeds set. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, God. Bumps. Go ahead and resume my cruise. Which one was resume cruise again? I can't quite remember. I believe this was... Re yep, there we go. There's resume cruise. Oh, God. Nope. Don't want to do that. Coming up to traffic. So, yeah, I just... I liked the layout of the gauges more in the Peterbilt. Um, the interior seemed a little bit better. So that's just what I personally went with. Um, I don't know. I just, I liked the Peterbilt, so I went with it. So, uh, yeah, we're, oh, we're in a 30 now. Go ahead and 
drop that down to 30 on the cruise. We need to get over to the left lane as well. Um, come on, let me over. There we go. So yeah, we're going to take our first run in our new truck, which is going to be awesome. Super excited for this. It's so, it, it changes the game so much when you have your own truck. That's why I kind of wanted to get through it pretty quickly and why I just drove a lot. I was still really enjoying the game, but it's just, it's not quite the same when you just don't have your own truck. It's just, it changes it so much when you have your own vehicle to run out of. So, because then when you drop off a load in a location, you're actually still in that location. So then you got to find a way where you want to go next. It's just, for me, it's such a better driving experience doing it that way. Okay, we don't want to get stuck in the... Don't want to get stuck in the, uh, the intersection there on a red. Alright, so let's go ahead and pick up our trailer. Could be one of these two little short 28s. Alright, put on the parking brake and enter. So we want to take the 10 tons of tableware to uh, Reno. Alright, go ahead and hook up to this trailer. Alright. Yeah, I am really, really enjoying this game. I have been playing it as much as I can when not recording. and I kind of had to stop because I was to the point where I wanted to buy a truck. And I thought about maybe getting to level 10 just because so many things unlock for level 10, but... What I'll do is I'll get to level 10 and then we'll go over and our truck again and just do another upgrade to it. So, go ahead and back this thing in. There we go. Turn off the flashers. Oops, I think I just killed it. There we go. I just want to get on the outside here and take a look at this. There we go. The first run in our new truck, which is awesome. Look at this thing. I love those hood mirrors. Those hood mirrors are awesome. So I went with the dual stack pipe, too. The single one looked kind of weird. Uh, white mud guards on the back. So 200-gallon tank on it. So it's not it's not the greatest in terms of uh, distance, but it'll do the job. So we'll have to upgrade that eventually. Let's go ahead and uh, start this trip. And we'll head up to Reno, which I haven't driven to Reno before. I've been avoiding going anywhere that I didn't really, haven't really been when I wasn't recording. So I pretty much saw a lot of in between LA and the Bay Area. I saw a lot of that because that's pretty much all I did was I went between those two. So let's go ahead and check real quick on our, on our fuel situation we got going on. Make this turn also. So we have about 195 gallons of fuel. That'll take us 930 miles. And our trip is, how much is our trip? Let's bring this up. Our trip is gonna be 351 miles. So we're gonna have plenty of fuel to get there. We are looking pretty tired though, which is strange. Not sure why we're so tired. That might be an issue, but we'll deal with that when we get there. Let's go ahead and get in the left lane. Also remember that it's a 30 zone. I don't wanna get a speeding ticket. Cause yeah, speeding tickets, $1,000, not fun. Especially when you're starting out and, you know, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. That sucks because then your trip that you're, you were making six grand on, you're now making five. And when you're starting out, that's quite a bit of difference. So, we're going to make a left-hand turn here, get onto the, uh, the bridge, start working our way out of uh, San Francisco, start working our way up north. Yeah, I mean, I've just been... Okay, yeah, we're going to have an issue with this sleeping because I shouldn't be tired. I just bought a truck. I should have slept while, like, they were building my truck or whatever the heck. <laughs> I should not be tired. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. So, yeah, we'll work our way out of San Francisco and start working our way east towards Reno, which should be a pretty fun drive. It is in real life. You go up through the mountains, so we'll probably be doing that. Let's go into seventh here. So we have 400 and... What is it? 440 horsepower. And we have the second engine, so we're not at 370. We have a little bit more, which is nice. But we only have a 10-speed, which is uh, pretty unfortunate. 
I mean, I would like an 18, but we're just not quite there yet. We could have gone with a 13, but I feel like a 13 would have just been more problems than it's worth because I would have had to shift out of 12 into 13th and I just, I don't know, just didn't feel right. So we're just gonna go with a 10 for now. It should do the trick. We're probably gonna have pretty high RPMs for the, uh, for the highways and it's probably not gonna do great on fuel consumption, but you know, it is what it is. Those mirrors are pretty dark. Can't quite see what's going on back there. So let's go. Oop, we are a little far ahead. There we go. So that orange light that comes on is my cruise. It's pretty much hitting the brake and uh, making my cruise sit where, you know, I want it, which is pretty cool because I have buttons on my actual wheel that I can up my cruise. So I can go up to 60 or 50. I don't know if you can see it down there below the fuel bar. So I can swap it up and down by five miles an hour. So that's the one thing I really like about this wheel is I have the option to uh, have everything set as many buttons as I can think of set. So it's really nice because I can do a lot of things on the fly. Um, you know, trailer brakes, Jake brake, cruise, cruise up and down, you know, axle up and down, just everything. So it's pretty nice. I'm getting tired. Well, <laughs> that's unfortunate because we have a long trip ahead of us. All right, let's go ahead and start slowing down here. We're gonna need to take this exit. I really don't wanna sleep. I don't even know if we have time to sleep. It's gonna take us seven hours to get there. We have 20 hours to complete the job. Might as well stop and just rest. Cause otherwise it's gonna be a really annoying trip. We're gonna have to be, we're gonna be dealing with him yawning all the time. Oh, come on Prius, go, Prius, go, Prius, fuck. Stupid Prius. I've had to do a lot of the uh, e-brake uh, starts on hills. Especially starting off in San Francisco. It's not the most rucker friendly city. We've got a hotel up here on the left. We'll go ahead and take that. Yeah, we'll turn into the rest area right here on the left. I am, I am. Calm down. Okay, so where exactly do I park? Just anywhere. Okay. Well, let's kind of get ourselves in a position here that we can sit in a nice spot. So we'll come up around here. Make a left turn. I don't know if we're still in the area or not. Yeah, we are. Okay, so let's. I want to sit like right here. That way, when it's ready to go, we just go straight on out. Let's back it up a little bit, too. Okay. So we're just going to back up to the wall. There we go. That way, we're kind of out of the way. We're in the corner. Not bothering anybody. Go ahead and sit. Brake lights. Nope, we're good. There we go, right there. Boom. All right. So, parking brake on, engine off. We'll leave the running lights on and uh, take a rest. <laughs> 